Greetings, Tom Romeo here from PCS, that's Practical Compliance Solutions. And I'm looking at um, a medical chart here. We're doing uh, video number two in the series of how to track medical charts using Traverse, our barcode tracking software. Uh, so right now you see I have a medical chart opened up. It's for uh, Mr. Uh, Clark Abrams. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to uh, create another medical chart. So I'm going to just change the description. I'm going to remove the chart ID. Perhaps I'll change the uh, location. Pick a new auto ID. Save it. And that's all there is to it. Now you'll notice uh, that we've got some custom fields and I'm going to show you on the asset type how those custom fields are created. Uh, we've got notes and this is uh, free text and we can also even add a, a photo. Uh, so just to show you what that looks like. So now we've got a photo on that, and we can say whatever we like. And that's it. So if I highlight that chart ID, paste it in there. Right, I didn't put any custom notes in. There I did. There's my photo. So uh, looking at the asset type, if I go to the admin page, asset types, and pick medical chart, you'll see that the medical chart can be contained inside of another asset, but it cannot be a container. Optional fields are your typical fields you would apply to a, uh, a, a real asset, let's say in, in, a, in a company. Um, perhaps you've got warranty information, make, model, that kind of thing. But here we've got some custom fields. So recall we had some comments. When is it due back? When was it returned? And you'll notice that the checkboxes are checked for, I want to collect this data when I check it out. I want to collect this data when I check it back in. Very simple. And then you'll see under asset relationships, if I choose a medical chart, you see that I'm allowed to store a medical chart inside of gussets, inside of a portable chart rack, or inside of a box. And we'll go into that, how to create asset types and how to uh, set up the parent-child relationship. So that's it for video number two. Like I said, I'd like to keep these videos nice and short. Though I would like to mention that the reason why, let's just pick any old medical chart. The reason why um, the descriptions look the way they do is because here I put in the description the asset type, which is MC for medical chart, the name of the person, and the year that I expect uh, this file is for. Uh, but really, you can be as descriptive as you like. And the whole idea is that that field right here will be used when you search for items, uh, as well as any of these other fields will be used when searching. Notice here I've got categories, right? So I, it's a historical file or a primary. Uh, the class, is it a manila folder, colored folder, binder? We just made up different items uh, just to show how you can store your data so that you can uh, you know, intelligently track it. You know, what department does it belong to, etc. cetera. Um, so if you had uh, privileges to go to the admin folder and looked up class codes, for example, 
um, if I look up manila folders, I can then see all the items that are stored as manila folders. And I could click on any one of them. So the system is very flexible in that regard. Uh, also, again, I showed you in the first video, the family tree. There's my chart, and that's the location where it is stored. And if I go to that location, I can show you all the items that are stored at that location. So the whole idea behind, um, and it's not just a matter of um, buying a software package and installing the software and then you know creating assets. You want to put a little thought into how you go about creating your asset types and all the data that's associated with your the data that you're storing that you're looking to track so that it's easy to track it. And uh, we're going to go step by step throughout the next few videos on why I made these decisions. And again, there's no right answer. You can you can decide to store your data any way you like. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that it's easy to find. So that's all I'm going to do for video number two, and then we're going to start another one.